Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to everyone from uh, Geneva and from Frankfurt. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on National Committee participation in the IEC. It's being uh, presented jointly by myself, Jack Sheldon from the IEC Central Office. Uh, my main role in the Central Office is as the Secretary of the Standards Management Board and I'm working today with Thomas Sentko from DKE. Thomas. Nice to hear you again. Hi, Jack. Hello, hello audience. I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure for me to do this webinar together with Jack. Okay, well, today we're going to do a double act, and we're going to try and do this in, in, in two parts. Uh, you're all muted, um, and there's a good reason for that from experience. If we unmute you, it creates a large amount of noise. Um, so we want interactivity. Uh, so you're welcome to ask questions at any time, but you'll have to type them in. Uh, you should have a panel on, on, on the GoToMeeting panel, uh, control panel, uh, where you can type in questions. Um, I'll try and catch them as they come along, but I may miss them for a second or two whilst we're presenting. So you're welcome to uh, answer questions uh, to ask as many questions as you want to. Um, both Thomas and I will deal with them as and when we can. So um, this is how we're planning to present uh, the content today. I'm going to start off and then I'll hand over to Thomas for the second half. Um, I'm going to deal with more of the statutory uh, rights and obligations of national committees and how they participate in the work of technical committees. And then Thomas will give you some more practical details of how a real national committee uh, deals with all these problems uh, in its everyday work. So the rights of national committees. Uh, national committees uh, can become participating or observer members, P or O members of technical committees subcommittees or systems committees. They can also take on secretariats. Now the full members of the IEC, and, and this isn't the uh, object of the, uh, of the talk today, but the full members of the IEC are the ones who pay full subscriptions uh, to, to become full members in, in the organization. We, we have a second uh, class of membership, the associate membership, and the associate members in the IEC can access the documents of all committees and they can be participating members in up to four of those committees. So they have a reduced form of membership or participation in the work of the IEC. They can see all the documents, but they uh, can only become active members in, in four of those technical committees. National committees, um, that is the members and, and associate members, ha have obligations when they become members of the IEC. They need to be representative of all national interests uh, in their country. So that they're not there to represent themselves, but they're there to represent the interests and their, their work includes obtaining positions from all relevant stakeholders in their uh, country. Those obligations of national committees, including promoting the IEC as an organization, and, and, and remember, as a national committee, you are also going to be promoting yourselves, which is a, a natural thing, but we also like you to, in fact, you have an obligation to promote the IEC itself as an, organ as an organization. You need to support IEC work, um, and by supporting work, uh, that means uh, providing experts, commenting on documents, and, and, and so on. And finally, there's an, uh, an obligation to implement IEC international standards at the national or regional level wherever possible. We, we recognize Okay, yes, someone had a problem, but it seems to have solved itself. So the, um, uh, the, the national committees have an obligation to implement international standards at the national or regional level. 
we also ask the national committees to protect the copyright of IEC documents and publications in their particular country. It's something that we can't do. We're, we're too far away for, for in most cases. So um, it's, it's part of the obligations of the national committees to ensure that there's no unauthorized use of IEC documents in their particular country. May, may I help you with this? You can help us, as, as always, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, just wanted to say that, of course, there are um, several uh, different regulations in regards to intellectual property all around the world. But anyway, um, well, as a member of the IEC, you own um, uh, 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 the, the intellectual property in your uh, in the area of your national committee, and uh, therefore. Um, yeah, you, you have to take care and, and interact with the with the local authorities how to prevent that the uh, IEC standards are given away for free. Uh, so that's maybe just uh, uh, additional information. Thank you, Thomas. Thank mm -hmm. you. So until now, I basically talked about the members and the associate members in the IEC, that's within the organization itself. But uh, from the participating in, in the technical work, each national committee can choose how it wants to participate in the work of any individual committee. And each national committee can choose to be a P, participating, O, observer, or non-member of each committee in the IEC. Now we have about 200 committees altogether in the IEC, and Thomas uh, kindly reminded me this morning that Germany is a P member in every single one of them. So he can't tell me anything about O membership, which was a bit of a shame. Uh, yeah. However, it, it is vital that the, the the national committees choose which committee, which technical committees they want to get involved in, because. Getting involved as a P member um, brings up responsibilities, and we'll be getting involved in that in the next slide or two. So you need to choose which committees you want to get involved in, and be and be careful uh, with that. Make sure you have the resources to to carry out the responsibilities there. Whether you are a P, O, or non-member. All national committees can vote on CDVs, which are committee drafts for vote or inquiry drafts, and FDISs, which are the final draft international standards. So that, that's true for all full national committees can vote on all of the final parts, or, or on all the final documents, um, whatever their membership in the technical committee. Let's get into a bit more detail on P membership, participating membership. Um, and, and, and the really key word here is the word participate, because P members in a technical committee have an obligation to participate actively in the work of that particular committee. Specifically, they have an obligation to vote on all matters that are sent out for vote, um, and in principle, also to comment on all the documents that go out. That particularly includes NPs, which are proposals for new work, CDVs, committee drafts for vote, and FDISs, final draft international standards. That's a fairly serious uh, obligation because some committees are actually very prolific and generate huge numbers of documents. Uh, one of my colleagues told me he'd just seen the agenda for TC61 in Busan, and he <laughs> said there were 81 documents for discussion there. So th there's a fair amount of reading that's going to be necessary for, for, for any national committee that's going to that meeting. Um, we expect P members to contribute to the meetings. Previously, when we use the word contribute, uh, we expected someone to turn up at the meetings as a delegate from that national committee. These days, uh, we allow the contribution to be made 
in other forms. They can be uh, comments on the documents that are on the agenda. And we uh, are also allowing use of remote participation uh, to a limited extent in plenary meetings of technical committees. It's something that hasn't taken off uh, terribly quickly yet, but it is available. Um, and I suspect we're going to see more of that in, in, in the near future. With the obligations, there also comes the, the right, and this is an important one, is that P members have the uh, opportunity to appoint experts to contribute to the work of the IC in project teams, working groups, and maintenance teams. And ultimately, it's in these groups, in these project teams, working groups, and maintenance teams, that the real work of the IC gets carried out. So th th this is the key area where you can contribute uh, expertise to the, uh, to the work of the standards uh, system. O membership, observer membership, you follow the work of the committee concerns without taking part quite as actively, without taking part actively. You can access all the documents. So we, we don't limit access to en any of the uh, committee documents. So you, you, you will have access to all the documents, even those that you don't need to, to vote on. You can comment on all documents. I think that's an important uh, thing to, to, to be aware of. And you can vote on CDVs and FDISs, but not on NPs. You can attend meetings, so there's no limitation on uh, taking part in committee meetings, but you cannot appoint experts in working groups and project teams. So the, the, those are the differences between P and O membership. In terms of non-members, obviously you are in principle not going to get involved in the work, but you will still have access to the uh, documents. And of course you can still vote because everyone can vote on the final drafts, on the inquiry drafts and FDIS. So that deals with participation in the work of the technical committees. I'm now going to spend a couple of minutes talking about participation, and we're talking about national committee participation, in the management committees of the IEC. And I'm going to use the uh, SMB, because uh, I know it well, um, as an example. The SMB is responsible for the management of all the standards work in the IEC. So it, it oversees the work of all the technical committees in the IEC. And in terms of, of participation from the national committees, the national committees appoint a chair. And the chair is there for up to two periods of three years. So the chair can't do more than six years uh, in place. There are seven automatically elected members of the SMB from those national committees which pay the uh, highest uh, contributions and hold the largest number of secretariats in the IEC. And those countries are currently Germany, France, China, the UK, Italy, Japan and the US. And each of the members from those countries can sit for a maximum period of two times three years. So every three years they come up for, um, well, it's not really, for reappointment. They're not actually elected. They can be reappointed for a second three-year period. The other eight members of the SMB come from the full member national committees. And they're elected, they're elected by the IC Council for a three-year term. Um, each of the members has... Um, an assistant member uh, with them. So basically we have 15 members plus the, uh, another 15 people who, who sit together with them. So we have a total of 30 people, 30 uh, uh, members and associates sitting around the table of the SMB. 
I'm going to talk a little bit about the requirements uh, we, we, we have on the uh, SMB members because um, th there's a, a large amount of responsibility that sits on the SMB. Um, it's important for what the IEC does. Um, and the uh, SMB members uh, have an important stake in what's going on uh, in, in, those, uh, in, in the technical work. So, um, and, and this is information which uh, sits in the uh, statutes of the IEC, which I've pulled out and abbreviated a little bit. We ask that members of the SMB have standardization experience, that they know something about the, uh, the, whole, the whole business of standardization. We work and communicate in English, and that's really, strictly speaking, simply for practical purposes. Uh, we have large numbers of documents to, to deal with, and having to interpret uh, and, 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 and everything else would slow down our work considerably. We require that the SMB members take part physically in SMB meetings. We have three meetings per year, so there are three SMB meetings per year. One of those meetings takes place during the general meeting of the IEC. We ask that the SMB members participate actively in the work of the SMB, and that means taking part in meetings, as I've just said, but also in um, reading documents. Um, we produce a, a significant amount of documents, between 10 and 15 documents a week, and at the moment we're producing even more because we've got the general meeting in Busan, which is just coming up, so there's a, a, a fairly constant avalanche of documents that's, that's being produced at the moment. We want SMB members to take part in the groups that we set up in the SMB. We, we, we fairly actively create ad hoc groups to deal with specific subjects. Um, and we expect all SMBs to, to take an active role in these groups. We expect SMB members to take decisions as though they were a board member and not representatives of their national committee. I think this is something I, I need to emphasize quite, uh, quite, quite strongly, because there's, there, there, there are differences between, between being representative of, of your national committee, where you're representing national interests, and the position that you might take in the IEC as being a full board member. Um, uphold the consensus principle and good governance, that's I think generally throughout the IEC, and applications of the principles of the SMB on, on how to manage the work. And last, and uh, Thomas reminded me earlier today, this is not least, it's perhaps the most important, to think strategically. It, it's important that we take a high level view of the work that's being undertaken uh, in the IEC and that we can look at it from a high level uh, and not get too bogged down in, in small detail. Yeah, there is a kind of danger, if I, if I may just assist on this, um, Jack, there is a danger when you talk about directives and we talk about reports from TCSCs that you go into detail. But in the end, this is a, is a management board of the IC and um, yeah, I think we have some some big challenges ahead. The, the market is changing. We have digitalization coming up. We have uh, procedures that must be fit for the future. So we have to really remind us each time that uh, this is it's not about running running just the IEC on a on a professional uh, level, but also assist the TCSCs on uh, how to deal with this kind of challenges lying ahead of us and uh, well doing this for the sake of the IEC and for the community that's it yeah okay but go, go ahead yeah mm -hmm. yeah well thanks Thomas it's basically up to you now I'm going to hand over to you um, and Thomas is going to explain um, some of the difficulties of, of trying to be a national committee uh, from the practical uh, point of view Thomas over to you yeah. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Um, yeah, first, first of all, uh, welcome you all out there. Um, th this is uh, the, the disclaimer I have to make. Uh, you know, 
what I will tell you in the next 10 minutes is uh, the perfect world. Uh, in the end, you, you will not have the same um, uh, situation in your uh, country, in your region where you, where you live. Um, we have the, the, the good uh, situation in Germany that we are doing this. We are running the standardization of electrotechnology with the ISC for about 100 years now. And um, so we are a little bit experienced and, and of course the market is educated that way, that it knows about the, um, the positive um, effects of standardization in the electrotechnical area. So uh, it's, it's easier for me um, to, um, to act in this market um, as it can be for, for some of you. So if you want to really uh, read it out, how to do adoption of international standards and uh, other documents, then you might read um, the, the ISO IC guide 21. There are two of them, and uh, you can you can go into details. But anyway, um, we said it this morning in the other webinar already. Um, we, we've, we we will meet in uh, Busan. So if you take the chance to come to Busan to the general meeting. Uh, don't hesitate to approach Jack and me or any other member of the SMA Standardization Management Board and, uh, well, ask questions and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you in, in person. So maybe next slide, Jack. Yeah, what's up? Uh, building a national committee. Um, the most important message I have to, to give you is reach out to the market and there is a, a Normally, we speak in the IC of serving the industry. Uh, of course, industry is an important and a vital market player in the in the national committees market. Um, but anyway, industry is one part of the market. We have uh, other um, players in the market. So we have the regulator inside. We have a, the small medium enterprises, which you cannot count as industry in that way, but well, they have their special interests and needs. Uh, you have, of course, the, the customers. Well, you have the, um, the users of the standards and the users of the products that are standardized and some, some other um, um, stakeholders in, in this uh, area and they, together they build the market. So it's, it's, normally it's easy to approach industry and get them on board. Uh, it's difficult as well, but it's it's much easier to get them on board, but the rest of the market. So uh, maybe one message is it's it, it is our task to really attract all the stakeholders that are in the market. So next slide, please. Yeah, and I will show you how we do it in the DKE. So this is an example. Of course, it will differ in your country, in your national committee. Uh, but maybe you take this as a well as an example for for how to involve the market into standardization. So this is how we do it since the 1970s, since we um, established the DKE. Um, we have a board, a steering board um, above our general management here in the DKE, and these board members coming from the market. So it's, um, of course, the industry is represented. You see uh, there are seven um, members coming from uh, an association of electric, electric, electrotechnical industry, which is uh, ZVEI in Germany. Um, the seven sectors of uh, electrotechnology we have um, uh, in, in, in the IC. Uh, but you see there are also other um, stakeholders represented. Um, what you see is uh, public transport, for example. You see the communication association, it's called Bitkom in Germany. You see the VDMA, which is the um, association of um, the mechanical um, and automation industry, normally acting in ISO, but um, we have some, some uh, fields of technology where we act um, um, together. So, and there is also the automotive industry uh, and you have the um, two representatives coming from the non-electrotechnical standardization, which is done by the Dean in Germany. And last but not least, again, um, the, the craftsmanship. So we have an association of um, 
we call it Handwerk in Germany. It's a craftsman. They are doing the installations, and of course, this is the main task. Uh, target for for standardization when it comes to electrical installation. So they also have uh, two members sitting in this council. And to say it open, they are giving direction to the DKE. So even my management is reporting to this twice a year, and uh, they will tell us if we are doing wrong uh, or if we're doing right, and we spend the money um, uh, in the right ways. Next slide, please. Okay, um, the, the market is not only represented on this high level. The message that I will uh, give you is that we have a representative of the market, not only industry, um, on each hierarchy level in the DKE. So what you see here is um, a department that's called technology. And inside of this um, um, technology department, we have different teams calling energy, health, mobility, industry. And in, as a counterpart of the um, technical officers um, in running the mirror committees, um, mirroring the work of the IEC, as counterpart, we, also, we always have one head of this um, sector inside of this uh, technology department. So we have one um, from um, energy de generation, area um, taking care about um, the direction of the, the, the uh, sector of energy in the DKE. Going in a little bit deeper, brings me to the next slides, is mirroring um, the IEC work. And what we do here is we, we, we try to have a mirror committee for each and every TCSC in the IEC. But for example, for the um, um, it's the committee 412, um, we mirror two different TCSCs. So why don't we call them mirror committee to TC 46 and TC 86? We said, okay, let's let's have an, a different um, numbering approach to these committees. It gives us the opportunity to combine. Uh, really similar work in, in one committee. So 46 is about communication cables and uh, connectors, and 86 is about fiber optics. And we, we see that the stakeholders in the German markets, they are active in, in both areas when it comes to information technology cabling, premise cabling, uh, they do um, cables in copper and in, and in fiber optics, and they do connectors in, in both areas. So. Yeah, what we have here is the mirror committee uh, driven by the uh, technical officer. He's more or less the secretary uh, of this mirror committee. But we also have uh, a chair uh, of this committee, and he's coming also from the market. So it can be industry, can be somebody from the university. It depends on uh, on the area and, and the sector and so on. So you see, that's the well an asset we have in, in the DKE and I can only recommend to to do the right thing in the IEC. Uh, it's it's good to have the, the the market driven approach and to involve the responsible persons from the market and then you have this kind of engagement and you're nearly sure that to do the right things in, in, in standardization. Okay, next please. Yeah, the mirror committee, as I said, um, we have about 15 to 20 persons uh, coming from the electrotechnical market. And you know this picture already, they come together talking about um, the, the documents coming from the IEC level. We spread them to all of them. And they are also coming from the market, from the different uh, associations and, and stakeholders groups. And they come together, uh, talk about uh, how to comment on uh, C, uh, CD, CDs, CDVs, whatever. So all the documents coming up. And uh, of course, they set up the so-called national delegation. So we have about 15, 20 people, for example, coming together in this uh, committee for telecommunication cabling. And they say, OK, who is able to, to um, to travel, so that's of course uh, an important thing. 
uh, not all of the stakeholders they have the um, the, the, the financial uh, ability to uh, travel around the world. So no, normally it's the it's the larger industry that uh, is sponsoring these these travel expenses. But anyway, as we say fr from the Miro committee. Um, there's somebody going to the TCSC meeting. He's not going um, as a member, uh, as a as an employee of his company. He is delegated by the Miro Committee, and he has to take over the uh, responsibility. Um, well, to argument the decisions of the Miro Committee. Of course, he has to. Uh, he has also. Be, he needs to be able to. Uh, come to a consensus with the with the other members of the TC, with the other part, uh, participating delegates. Uh, but anyway, he shall do the best to represent his mirror committee's opinion on these topics that are on the agenda. So that's the challenge. And after the meeting um, is done on the IC level, he goes back to the mirror committee, reporting to them and tell them, um, well, really sell them the consensus that is um, maybe made uh, on the IEC uh, TCSC level. So that's a challenge for this for this national delegate. You always have one head of delegation who is now then uh, allowed to vote if there is a, a voting needed on the uh, on the TCSC level. Anyway, um, you can of course send a number of experts um, to the TCSC, um, and but one of them must be the, the head of delegation. Yeah, the whole system on the national level as on the international level is uh, consensus driven. So, of course, we try to discuss as long as we come to a point where nobody complains anymore. That's that's the, I think, I think the definition of consensus. OK, next slide, please. Yeah, so how do you do this? There's a, a Jack already said it on the management level, there's a, a bunch of uh, documents coming up all week. Uh, it might be the same on the on the TC level. So the TC is uh, sending out drafts, uh, drafts for vote, uh, final drafts, and um, maybe some other documents. Uh, the important thing as an NC is that you have a kind of mechanism to provide these documents to your national committee members, to your stakeholders. And encourage them to comment on these documents and say, hey, this is a CD, can I have your comments until one week for at the end of the uh, commenting period? And then the NC, uh, represented by the Mirror Committee, can send these documents to the IC um, yeah, Technical Committee via the voting system. So it's all about circulating these documents, getting the opinion from the market, giving this um, to the to the IEC community, and then it's about to find a consensus on an international level, and then it goes back to the national committee, and you can do this circle uh, several times. Um, well, it's important to have them um, spread into the market. We do an announcement uh, via our homepage uh, as well. So the market knows that there is something going on. It's also your um, uh, obligation to inform the market. And uh, therefore, we have own websites where we publish all the, the new projects and the standards that are uh, published uh, um, weekly. OK, go ahead. Next slide, please. Yeah, and of course, when we talk about a consensus-driven organization, there's always somebody complaining about this consensus, complaining about that he's not involved in the decision-making process, complaining that he ha has not known about that there was something going on in, in standardization. So what, you, what I can really recommend or what, what is needed when you drive this kind of organization is uh, you need kind of system um, uh, that somebody, or better, better say it, everybody um, can appeal against a decision of a mirror committee or even against the um, well start of a project of an IEC project or uh, the publication of a national standard. So 
this is one thing we have in, in Germany that we said everybody can approach the DKE and say, as I complain about the paragraph 4.3 of your uh, draft uh, national standard uh, based on IEC standard XYZ. So really everybody, my mother can do this. Um, and the mirror committee takes care about this and uh, informs um, the, the, the one that appeals uh, about um, its consultation and decision. And you might imagine that uh, there will be again an appeal from everybody against this decision. So it goes one level higher to the technical board we have in the IEC. Then they have a decision and you, even then you can appeal against this and um, in the end, it goes to the to the steering board, which I showed you in the first slides, and they then finally come to a decision. So this kind of mechanism, it's maybe it's very German this approach, but in the end, you need some kind of appeal mechanism against um, the decision and the, the publication of uh, standards in your country. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, that's. I said already, um, the, the national delegation to IEC, you know, we have the mirror committee, um, the, the interested experts register via the meeting registration system, and the um, technical officer of the mirror committee, uh, together with the chairman, then says, okay, this is the delegation we, uh, we have set in the preparation meeting on the, on the national side. Um, everybody who registered is um, accredited uh, by the national committee and they are then allowed to participate in TCSC meeting. If there are experts traveling to the TCSC meeting without the accreditation of its national committees, they, are, they will not be allowed to participate in the meeting. That's the, the ideal world. Of course, Sometimes we have this, that somebody for, for, has forgotten about this. Uh, it, it, it can be dealt between chairman, secretary, and the national committee on the last minute, but it's the, it's the rule, no participation without national delegation. That's the, the hard um, rule we have in, in the IEC. Okay, uh, there is one thing uh, that we talked about, working group and, and project team level. Um, experts participating on in working groups and, and project teams and all these uh, groups um, developing documents for decision in the TCSC, there you can participate as a regular expert representing also your company. Um, but no decisions are made on this level, so all the decisions are made in the TCSC level and therefore uh, we have this one country, one vote decision, so this is really a democratic approach here in standardization. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, and this is, uh, I think, already my last slide, giving you, showing you some faces. So we are very proud to have a president, of course, coming from the industry. So the CTO of Phoenix Contacts, a worldwide uh, manufacturer of connectors and systems in this area of uh, industry automation is Mr. Roland Bend. And uh, yeah, Mr. Michael Tiger, he is the managing director of the DKE, and he is the secretary of the German National Committee, uh, held by the DKE. And in the end, we all do what Mr. Bent and the council of the DKE is telling us. And we're doing this now in DKE for the last 50 years, in uh, Germany, the last 100 years. So yeah. That's it so far from my side, Jack. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Thomas. And now I, I effectively hand it over to the audience. Um, now, this period, at this moment, when we held this webinar this morning, I had about 20 questions uh, yeah. on my screen, and I haven't got any at all at the moment. Oh. So I, I, I ask everyone who's listening to, 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 to get involved, uh, unless you've understood everything that both... Uh, Thomas and I have uh, told you already this morning, but I'd be surprised. Yeah, but anyway, we have we, we, we said it already. You know? We are approaching the general meeting in Busan. All the NCs 
are invited to come to the general meeting in Busan. There is the very important council meeting of the Friday where every NC um, um, well needs to participate to, 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 to raise its voice uh, when it comes to the um, yeah to, to come to discuss the future of the of the IEC, do the votings for um, the management committees and for the future president of the IEC. So, well, we, I, I think we should recommend to participate in this Busan meeting as NC representative. I, I would certainly as, uh, encourage that too. I would second that. And mm -hmm. I would also point out that the uh, meeting of the SMB and the CAB, for that matter, um, are uh, open to observers, uh, at least within uh, a, a certain number of uh, places that are available there. And yeah. if you're interested in listening uh, or observing an SMB or a CAB meeting, please don't hesitate to register for those meetings as, as well. Yeah. And I'm still waiting for questions. Has nobody got anything to say? It it's a, a rather surprises me because I see people on the attendance list that I would expect questions from. But uh, Anyway, if they are too shy, no worries. Just approach us during the yeah. Busan week. We are running around there from meeting to meeting, but always happy to get in touch with oh. other NC people. I've got, yeah? I've got a question. Got a question. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, uh, Eduardo. You need to type the uh, question into the uh, into the space there. Okay, let's do it it's another way. Um, okay, okay, Eduardo, I'm going to unmute your microphone. Can you can you uh, give me your question, Eduardo? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yes, I can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Okay, good. It's, it's just uh, some people in the national committees, uh, in the mirror committees, they ask me what is the di big difference between the power of the vote of a P member and O member? That's the question. Yeah, okay. Well, obviously, I failed to explain that earlier on. Uh, basically, the P members have an obligation to vote on all the documents, vote and comment on all the documents. Uh, the O members are really only interested in following the work of the committee without getting deeply involved in how that uh, committee, uh, uh, without getting deeply involved in the work. In, in terms of the rights, the P members have the right to appoint experts in the working groups whereas the O members don't have that right. Okay. Tony Capel, no obligation to vote on TC documents, Q documents. Um, well, P members, strictly speaking, <laughs> have the, uh, an obligation to vote and submit comments on everything that gets sent to them. So the answer is yes, they do have an obligation to respond to Q documents as well. I didn't want to go into that level of detail. Basically, the answer <laughs> hey, is... Tony, regards to Canada, this is, this is a very, very nice question here. Thank you. Okay, then we, then we got another good one here. Uh, you're going to like this one, Thomas. Uh, I, I'm actually going to, not going to name people because it's unfair. No, it's is, there, it, is there any thought of limiting the number of delegates from a single country to a plenary meeting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, when you look up in in the directives, I think I, I don't say I, 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 I say nothing wrong that there is no limitation from from in, in the directives. But uh, as it is a um, well, we said it's a decision of the TCSC to come to a consensus that it makes no sense if every country sends ten experts and you sit together in a plenary with hundred of hundreds of experts. So uh, I know some TCs, they made a decision on a consensus base and say, okay, let's have not more than three or five experts coming from one uh, national committee. And uh, well, I think that's, a, that's the answer of the question, huh? Jack? Yeah, and, and, and it's also a, um, an issue for the host committee 
Um, obviously, you know, if you have a hundred delegates, there's much more obligation on the host uh, TC think about, Yeah, you know, think, about all the, think about all the coffee they are drinking and well, all they, the, exactly all, all the yeah. coffee and, and 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 the size of the meeting room as well. I mean, you know, yeah, uh, it becomes uh, it becomes unreasonable. So definitely, yes, there are thoughts. Um, I, and I've had I've had cases where a TC secretary and even a host committee have come back to us and said, uh, we've got 20 delegates from such and such a country. Is there anything we can do about it? And, you know, when, normally we've always managed to negotiate that situation until now yeah. without yeah. having to write rules. Yeah. So uh, there's one golden, I think there's one golden rule in the IC that we only write rules for those things that are really absolutely necessary. And up, up to now, uh, we we said there's no definite need to to minimize the number of experts per country. Um, the mm -hmm. TCSC shall decide on a consensus base and come to this. And um, well, if you really need to minimize the number of experts, it's better to talk with each other than uh, well well beating with rules against each other. Okay, my next question is an easy one. The answer is I don't know. When will the copy of this presentation become available? And I want to send the copy to interested people. Um, I'm going to have to refer that to uh, Jan Henrik Tiedemann because he runs the IEC Academy, and yeah. I'm just the poor guy. And, and with Thomas giving the show for today, um, I, I imagine. Because I, I think that there is an, uh, an, academ, an IC Academy portal on our website, and I imagine he'll be posting this on there next week when he's back. He's on vacation at the moment. So I, I would hope that sometime next week. Okay. If there's an, if there's an urgent need, um, I think we can, they we can, can send it. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if you're desperate for it, uh, just yes. let me know and uh, I'll, I'll get a copy to you. Yeah. Um, Okay, then I've got Eduardo back. It's more from the side in how important could an O member vote or comment be for the TC itself? In, in, in practice, um, all comments are treated pretty much equally. Yes. Um, I don't think technical committees look whether the comment came from a P member, O member or, or, or whatsoever. I, th I think that they uh, treat all the comments absolutely equally. Yeah, that's also my experience. Um, I know that these 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 people sitting together there are, are technical experts, and they 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 doing this. Um, well, they really love to do this. Otherwise, they they wouldn't engage so deeply in in the IC's work on a voluntary base, and they just don't care where this uh, where this comment comes from if it is somehow valid they will reflect this in the standard so that's the thing of course it's it's good to send an expert to the to the plenary uh, that the comment can be understood or maybe explained uh, uh, during the plenary and then it's uh, well it's it has a it's more successful to send a comment and an expert um, while fighting for this comment and for this input for the TCSC yeah Okay, we've got a lovely question here now. When will TC61 be split up? <laughs> <laughs> no comments, no comments. No comments. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think that's a question you, you will have to ask to TC61. Um, I, th I, th I think there, there are a number of people who feel that the method of operation of TC61 is not I was getting <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I don't, want to go, I don't want to go deeply into the argument because. Uh, yes. But just to point out, this this isn't a new issue or a new question. I think there are a number of people who feel that that TC61 needs to look at, at its operations and structure. Um, okay. But but I don't want to go into more detail than that because I think it's something that TC61. It's best to look at itself rather than from outside than people like myself getting involved. Yeah, and as soon as the SMB shall, shall assist on this, um, we can we can of course make some recommendations. Yes. But yeah. In the end, this is an expert-driven organization as well, and the experts in the TC, if they start to complain about the complexity of the of the TC, 
well, they shall come up with a with a new organization form. But up to now, well, it, it works and I think that's it. Huh? Okay, yeah. I've got a, a question. Um, is, a, is a merit committee a must for a good national committee? Is it recommended to form? I, I'm going to start the answer and I'm going to hand over to Thomas. Yes. No, no, there's no obligation whatsoever to form a mirror committee. I, I've certainly met uh, national committees which were so small that they were run by one person. Okay. Um, it was one person in a small office. And clearly that that, that, that person couldn't run uh, mirror committees. He, he, he had he had to deal with everything himself and he had to be very selective about what he did, what he was going to deal with. Yeah. If you're going to be if you're going to be interested in a broad spectrum of what the IEC is dealing with, mirror committees are pretty much the only way to handle the the, the avalanche of documents that we produce in the organisation. Over to you, Thomas. Well, you said it already. Um, <laughs> you said it already. If you are a small country and you don't have this infrastructure of associations around you um, while well, working with the with the experts and with the companies um, uh, already uh, what shall you do uh, well you start with uh, some some really important tcses maybe uh, rotating machines or safety and in installation something like this and then you approach well the stakeholders that are available in this area and um, you you start like this and maybe you start as an o member observing what's going on, how can I, well, get some, some knowledge out of the system and to enhance the, the market with safety and security. And if you are then more experienced and the infrastructure is, is growing and it's, uh, uh, well, the market expands in your national committee, then you can try to build a, a mirror committee. A mirror co committee can also meet uh, virtually. So, uh, we, we will have this more and more in, in, in uh, also in Germany. We do web access like this and the, the people don't need to travel and maybe they are not allowed to travel or not able to travel. Uh, so yeah, start with a very small number of, of selected experts. But in the end, it would be, well, the market. It's not only industry. Always try to engage some more, but industry. Okay, thanks, Thomas. And uh, I've got a comment here. Uh, I think it is not clear to many the difference in the role and the responsibilities of an expert going to a working group project team meeting and a delegate uh, representing a national committee going to a plenary. Uh, well, Thomas did mention this, but maybe let, let's emphasize it a little bit more. In a technical committee, in a, in, in a committee of any kind, technical committee, subcommittee or systems committee, the representatives, the members of a technical committee are the national committees and they have delegates who represent their national committee in the technical committee. You're right. In a working group, you have experts who are appointed by the national committees, but once they're in the working group, they're bringing their own competence directly, their own competence and expertise directly into the, the work of the working group. So they're not representatives as such of the national committees. They're appointed by the national committees, but they represent themselves. Thomas. Yeah, it's all said and done. You, you said Thank it you. completely right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I like it when you correct me though. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, and then I've got one final question. Um, I have a question. As a postgraduate student, is it possible to participate in a technical committee? And the answer is yes, but you participate through your national committee. As, as I said in the previous uh, answer, the, the, the members of the technical committee are representatives of the national committee. So it's the national committee that's going to appoint you as a delegate to participate in the work of the technical committee. Now, from experience, most, most national committees are only too pleased if they can find volunteers to participate, but it has to be through the national committee. You'll, you will be representing your country if you participate in the work of the technical committee. 
That's it. That, yeah, that's it. That's the last question I've got on the list. Let me just scroll down a bit more. No, it's not going anywhere. Has anyone else got a last minute question store? No, that looks as though it's done. In which case, I'm going to take this opportunity to thank you all for uh, having taken part. Um, I think I've enjoyed uh, taking part today. I, I hope Thomas has as well. And, and as Thomas has said uh, previously, uh, those of you who are coming to the IEC general meeting, please don't hesitate uh, to make contact with us, uh, with me, with Thomas, with any other members of the SMB, uh, or with anyone else from the central office uh, if you've got any questions of one kind or another. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to say thank you very much for, for, to all of you. Thomas, uh, I'll let you say goodbye too. Goodbye, Jack. It was a pleasure for me. Okay, so goodbye to everyone. Thanks very, very much for taking part uh, this afternoon. Have a good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bye-bye.